When we went to get our morning coffee, we were welcomed by another superb day. Yes, to, to Pompeii. As we ate breakfast, we remembered our last visit here, 2019, the Morella Explorer 2 that had been infected by the norovirus and had to be totally disinfected before we could board. As a result, we missed visiting Pompeii. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the officer of the watch speaking from the bridge. A magnificent view here in Naples as we have our breakfast. Today we plan to visit Pompeii first. We can take a train, we can take a bus, or we can take a taxi. We decided to see what kind of deal we could get in a taxi. There's always an air of expectancy as we arrive in a new destination. The last time we were here, it was actually raining. As usual, several taxi drivers are waiting to offer a trip to Pompeii and we decided that this is what we should do. The taxi driver gave us a very reasonable price and was prepared to wait for us in Pompeii for three hours. The quick 35 minute trip actually saving some time for us over the rail option. Forty minutes after stepping off the ship, we were stepping into the ancient ruins of Pompeii, a place I've heard of since I was a child, especially the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD and the discovery of the ruins in 1592 by architect Domenico Fontana. Well, it's uh, really interesting to be doing this. We then visit the amphitheatre. Built around 70 BC, it's one of the earliest Roman amphitheatres built of stone. Previously, they'd been built out of wood, so thus it survives. The amphitheatre measures 135 metres long and 104 metres wide. The arena is six meters below the ground level and measures 66.7 meters long and 35.1 meters wide. Nature's this time in the kids. At that time it was known as a spectacular rather than an amphitheatre as that term was not yet in use at the time. The design is seen by some modern crowd control specialists as being almost perfect. The lower seats for higher class citizens who would have been seated closest to the arena. Inside a corridor ran the circumference of the amphitheater and was used to access the arena. It's a great experience to walk through and imagine what this ancient amphitheater was like. And then to emerge into the surrounding vineyards. Beyond the vineyards, the crater of Vesuvius. Then suddenly we're back in 2022. But not for long, the lava would have flown down this street, destroying everything in its wake.
these the ruins of actual homes that disappeared in those moments of time when suddenly for this place anyway time stood still the road okay. below the pavement. I want to avoid all the sewage. Nate explains. The sewage was disposed into the channel to be washed away by the next rains. The walls of houses that would have been plastered and decorated, full of furniture and chairs, even second stories. Ancient stoves in ancient kitchens. And no doubt gardens. As we walk around and learn more, our imaginations grasp a little of what it was like here 2,000 years ago when life was vibrant, busy, and the sounds of laughter and children playing filled the air. And the crowds made their way to the amphitheater to see the latest production. Nate Online getting the virtual guide. Strangely, this is the Temple of Isid, a Roman temple dedicated to an Egyptian goddess, Isis. Beside it, the gymnasium, where men and boys would train for athletic events. It does take a while to walk through here, but the more we walk, the more we're able to understand and imagine what it was like. Every now and then a garden, then more houses. All around us, evidence of a vibrant city in its prime. And as I looked around, I kept remembering the fact that when Mount Vesuvius erupted, all this was covered by at least six meters of ash and other volcanic debris. So at last I got to see it. Nate had actually brought the family here when the kids were toddlers. For me to walk through historic sites like this is a real treat. This is the Via del Abundanza, the main street of Pompeii. I imagine what it was like 2,000 years ago and to be able to actually see some of the ruins here was very special. So come and walk with me. Imagine with me.
Having said that, it's perhaps difficult for us to imagine the catastrophic events of AD 79. At the time of the eruption, Pompeii had a population of 20,000. Ironically, the reason for its prosperity was the volcanic ash, which enriched the soil, increasing its agricultural fertility and making it a favorable location. The inhabitants of Pompeii were actually used to minor earthquakes, but clearly, no one expected the power of the eruption that day. It lasted for two days. The first phase was a pumice rain known as Lapili that lasted about 18 hours and allowed most residents to escape. Only approximately 1,150 bodies have so far been found on site which seems to confirm this theory and most people probably managed to salvage some of their valuable belongings. Many skeletons, however, were found with jewelry, coins and silverware as they salvaged what they could carry. But alas, too late. Later, pyroclastic flows began to envelop Pompeii, totally destroying the city and killing all who had not fled. By the evening of the second day, the eruption was over. Believe it or not, in Pompeii and even the surrounding towns, heat and not ash suffocation was the cause of death. The latest studies showing that exposure to the 250 degree centigrade pyroclastic flows even at a distance of 10 kilometers was sufficient to cause instant death even if people were sheltered within buildings. The latest estimate of the date of the eruption determined a date of 24th to 25th of October, AD 79. Even today the heat damage is clear. The remains of the city obliterated in 48 hours. The power of nature always amazes me. The mighty typhoons and hurricanes, the devastating floods, the powerful oceans. But none can compare with a volcanic eruption. To walk its streets today is a moving experience. And yet the statue that stood in Pompeii that day still stands, head bowed as though mourning the events of that day. The antiquarium giving glimpses into the past and reminding us that the city would have been green and not the way most of it is today. We didn't have much time here, but it was nevertheless an emotive experience. We topped it all off with an eight euro orange juice. Next we visit the city of Naples.